Hello from Shanghai. This is Chris. Welcome to another episode of China Currents, your weekly news report of what's trending in China. On December fifth, American rating agency Moody's downgraded its China's sovereign credit rating outlook from stable to negative, while retaining a long-term rating of A1 on the country's sovereign bonds. Moody's cited growing risks of persistently lower mid-term economic growth and a property downturn, which pose broad downside risks to China's physical, economic, and institutional strength. This decision has drawn disappointment from China's Ministry of Finance, which called the matter disheartening. In an interview, the ministry emphasized, despite fluctuations in economic recovery during different quarters, China has successfully overcome risks and pressures resulting from the pandemic and various domestic factors. In the first three quarters of this year, China's GDP grew by 5.2 percent year-on-year, with domestic demand making a significant contribution to this growth, particularly through consumer spending, which contributed 83.2 percent, and capital formation, which contributed 29.8 percent. Regarding Moody's concerns about local government debt, the Ministry of Finance stressed that it has established an institutional framework to prevent and resolve risks related to local government debt. At the end of 2022, China's local government debt stood at 35.1 trillion yuan, and total government debt, including debt managed by the central government, was 61 trillion yuan. The government's statutory debt-to-GDP ratio of 50.4 percent is below the internationally accepted 60 percent warning line, and lower than that of major market economies and emerging markets. Moody's downgrade of China's sovereign credit rating outlook carries a significant implication. However, China's Ministry of Finance remains confident in the country's economic prospects and its ability to deepen reforms and navigate risks and challenges. And next up on technology, on December 4th, a team from Chinese Academy of Sciences, China's leading research institute, announced significant progress in stroke treatment. This achievement is attributed to the utilization of brain-computer interface technology, which has the potential to regulate neuronal discharge and facilitate the recovery of damaged neurons and brain circuits. The team developed an implantable hydrogel neuroelectrode capable of acquiring brain neural information from the recipient and modulating neurons based on this information. Through electrode, the researchers conducted an eight-week-long monitoring of brain neural information in a laboratory mouse, successfully modulating stroke-affected brain neural circuits. This modulation effectively reduced the infarct area of brain tissue and facilitated the restoration of the mouse motor function. Research on implantable BCI devices emerged in the mid 1990s. Despite certain technological disparities between China and the U.S., the emerging BCI technology presents an opportunity for Chinese researchers to catch up and even surpass their international counterparts in a relatively short period. As the technological competition between the two countries intensifies, humanity may witness another technological leap similar to the one in the Cold War era. Next up, in an interview on December 6th, Wang Zhiqin, Deputy Director of China Academy of Information and Communications Technology and head of the 6G Task Force, revealed that China is on track to achieve commercial use of 6G by 2030, with standardization to be completed by 2025. During the interview, Wang Zhiqin outlined the envisioned future applications of 6G technology. He highlighted three new scenarios: the fusion of communication and perception, the integration of communication and AI, and a concept of ubiquitous connectivity, which refers to the integration of physical and virtual domains. These scenarios are expected to connect not only individuals but also various intelligent entities, such as robots and metaverse environments. Wang also mentioned that 5G could be further enhanced to address industry-specific challenges, which could pave the way for 6G advancements. China began 6G technology trials in 2019 and has been conducting research on system architecture and technical solutions. These efforts are laying the groundwork for future advances in 6G technology. As China continues to make progress in 6G, it is positioning itself at the forefront of next-generation communication technology to revolutionize connectivity and unlock new opportunities for digital future. Next up, on carbon emissions. 
On December 6, the Chinese Embassy in the United Kingdom held a press conference to counter the UK's erroneous statements made during the 2023 United Nations Climate Change Conference. The UK official claimed that China, as a major emitter, has significantly increased its emissions since 1990. Chinese embassy spokesperson emphasized that global climate change is the cumulative result of greenhouse gas emissions. Developed countries like the UK have emitted substantial greenhouse gases during their industrialization process spanning over 200 years, bear an undeniable historical responsibility. The spokesperson also pointed out that China has made significant progress in reducing CO2 emissions intensity, which decreased by over 51% in 2022 compared to 2005. China has ceased the construction of new coal-fired power plants overseas and mainly supplies the global wind power and photovoltaic equipment markets. Moreover, China has funded over 1.2 billion RMB to the Global South, supporting developing countries and enhancing their climate change resilience. These efforts fully demonstrate China's commitment to combating climate change. The embassy spokesperson urged the UK to respect the facts and take tangible actions, collaborating with other nations in addressing the shared challenge of humanity rather than evading its responsibility. Next up, on December 6, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbing announced during a regular press that Belt and Road Initiative has achieved full coverage of Arab nations. Wang explained that on November 29th, China and Jordan signed a Memorandum of Understanding between the Government of the People's Republic of China and the Government of Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan on jointly promoting the construction of the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, which means China has now signed cooperation documents for the BRI with 22 Arab countries and the Arab League. As the BRI marks its 10th anniversary, bilateral trade between China and Arab countries exceeded $430 billion in 2022, doubling the figure from a decade ago. China imported 270 million tons of oil from Arab nations, accounting for half of its total global imports. Over the past decade, mutual investment between China and Arab countries have grown exponentially with the implementation of over 200 major cooperative projects benefiting nearly 2 billion people. Wang Wenbing emphasized that BRI has become a significant international platform for cooperation, providing strong support for the establishment of a shared future between China and Arab nations. Next up, let's take a look at the popular Chinese boba tea. On November 28, a tea latte and its packaging made by Hei Tea was launched and quickly gained popularity. However, the religious elements in the outer packaging also attracted considerable criticism. On December 1st, the Shenzhen Religious Affairs Bureau summoned Haiti for a talk. The company subsequently removed the controversial product from the sale on December 3rd and conducted an inspection related to the situation. Chinese regulation explicitly prohibits commercial promotions in the name of religion. According to the bureau, Haiti had played a close-to-the-line game. Now we can only summon them for talks, which is also a legal measure, and the company has been very cooperative, showing good attitude in admitting their mistake. They sent us rectification report on Friday night, and by December 3rd, all products have been removed from the shelves, an officer stated. Chinese law strictly divide the religious and the secular space. By law, religious affairs could only operate within the worship places, as well as religious schools. Next up, on December 1st, China welcomed the first batch of visa-free travelers after the start of its visa-free policy for France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, and Malaysia. According to the latest regulations of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China, from December 1, 2023 to November 30, 2024, holders of ordinary passports from the above-mentioned six countries can enter China visa-free for business, tourism, visiting relatives and friends and transit for no more than 15 days. A total of 2,029 inbound visitors entered China through visa-free channels on Friday, the first day of China's implementation of 15-day visa-free policy for ordinary passport holders from the above-listed six countries, the National Immigration Administration said on Saturday. According to NIA, the number of individuals entering China from these six countries on Friday increased by 12.6% compared to the previous day. 
Next up, on December 3rd, China Eastern Airlines flight MU721 from Shanghai to Hong Kong was grounded in Xiamen due to a malfunction during the flight, and the flight arrived in Hong Kong at 6.33 p.m. The flight, operated on a six-and-a-half-year-old Airbus A330-300, departed Shanghai Hongqiao Air International Airport at 8.10 a.m. It was intended to arrive at Hong Kong International Airport at 10.50 a.m. Those who experienced the incident on board said that they heard a loud bang on the plane's left side and then the fuselage began to shake violently, and a passenger on the plane's left side said the engine had broken down. According to information posted by netizens, there was visible damage to the aircraft's engine fan blades. Senior Captain Chen Jiangguo said in an interview that engine blade separation is a serious engine failure, usually caused by foreign object impact, engine blade mass, and engine intake stripping, resulting in blade damage. The specific cause is subject to further investigation by the airline. Last but not least, on December 4th, the National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System updated that on November 30th, there was a change in the corporate structure of Evergrande Real Estate Group. Zhao Changlong stepped down as chairman, with Liang Wenkang taking over the role. Previously, Zhao assumed the position of chairman of Evergrande Real Estate Group from Xu Jiain in August 2021. Evergrande has been in crisis since the beginning of this year. On August 17th, Evergrande Group, one of China's largest real estate developers, has filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States. Evergrande, which owes over $300 billion, has been struggling with a liquidity crisis for months. It has missed multiple bond interest payments. In September, Xu Jiain, the former chairman and founder of Evergrande, was detained by police. According to the company's announcement, Xu has been subject to mandatory measures on suspicion of crimes. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Currents. If you have any thoughts and comments about our show, please reach us at the email address below. I'm Chris, looking forward to hearing from you and see you next time.